everyone. This is great. I'm glad everyone could uh, find time in their 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 week and then their important Friday to uh, join with us. And um, we're excited to be continuing to roll out these webinars. You know, you got to roll with the punches these days, right? So uh, the good news is we have technology uh, and we can all virtually meet. We can virtually learn and we're going to be sharing some ideas, some tools, some tips on landscaping and landscaping with style as we've named the uh, had fun with the naming uh, on the title screen right now. You see uh, the various um, aspects of what we're going to hope to cover today. Certainly there's a lot more that one can get into and we're going to hopefully give you resources that as you get more into this, you can um, research more, find more information. And then we're going to be hosting more of these in the future um, where this is kind of general in nature. We're going to start to offer more specific detailed ones uh, that Amelia, um, who will be joining with us here in a second uh, and, and uh, covering today, she's going to be developing some additional content and, and we value your feedback. So if you want to learn more, uh, suggest other topics that you're uh, interested in. We, we definitely want to do that. Also, we also want to make sure that it's kind of uh, open, um, more of an organic discussion as much as it can be with these virtual type of events. So there is the chat feature. So feel free to use the chat. And I'm going to move the screen here. So the ho uh, housekeeping, if you see the chat feature, it's the one with the, the call out box, if you will. Looks like the cartoon box. If you click that, please feel free to um, enter in a question. Amelia and I will be both looking at that and uh, uh, we'll try to respond and answer your question. Um, also, as is uh, the norm for most of these type of things, please do go ahead and uh, make sure that your microphone is currently off. Uh, that way everyone listening in has the benefit of uh, hearing it uninterrupted. Also, um, you can make the decision if you want your video on off. But just FYI, and also know that uh, with everyone's, um, if everyone's okay with it, I am uh, recording this so that we can host it in the future um, for future people to look at, go back, review, um, and whatnot. So that stated, I'm going to turn it back over and reintroduce Amelia Herdenstein, and she's going to be uh, centrally leading the conversation today. But she has a fun little uh, survey results to go over here. Yeah, hi, thank you everyone. Now we had a, a great response to our outreach for the class today. Just wanted to make, um, we have been looking at who is attending and who is and why you're interested. So in case anybody um, you know wanted to see this data, it looks like 57% of the people that signed up and registered for the class um, were really looking at improving a select area of their landscape. Um, and then others, another great percentage, 24%, just really interested in the plants and gardens and learning more about gardening with style and the different plants that are available to them. Um, and then a smaller percentage of community property managers, as well as um, people with an entire site to redesign. So master planning as well in that 11% chart. So um, thank you all for being here. And again, feel free to use that chat. And you can also reach out to us too after the presentation via email if you have any specific questions regarding your project. Excellent. So we uh, we want to move into just quick introduction of the district. Uh, obviously, you're you're participating in this webinar today. You may or may not be within the district. However, we want to give you a little context of who we are and what we do for our communities. And the key thing is, is that we provide water, wastewater and recycled water to our communities. And I also have to add, when, when people say that we give drinking water, we also provide fire service, fire fighting, fire flow service, which unfortunately we saw that was uh, definitely needed in the last couple uh, weeks with the Santa Anas. But that aside, um, over we're, we're approaching 170,000 residents that we provide these services to. Uh, and we do know that we are an expanding, growing community so that we expect another additional 40,000 over the next 20 years. Um, and to that point, we've been developing our water supply to make sure that we are able to make sure that when you want that tap, that, that faucet or that irrigation sprinkler to run, you absolutely have that. You know, we're not the electricity 
uh, utility where we can have roving blackouts, or in this case, roving blueouts. We have a high supplier of water, um, highly reliable. Um, the majority of it, all of our drinking water, however, this is what's interesting to our area, is that, you know, unfortunately, we don't have good groundwater reserves. So all of our drinking water is imported from up to 400 miles away, whether it's Northern California snowmelt that's brought to us via the California aquifer or the Colorado River aquifer bringing water from that region over to us. So there's a great effort, a great amount of uh, uh, money and cost involved in bringing drinking water supplies here, which is really um, makes sense in terms of why we want to uh, reuse it as often as we can and make the most efficient use out of it. So to the extent we can uh, at our wastewater treatment plants, we're able to treat it to very high tertiary treatment levels and we redistribute that in our communities. And you might notice in your HOA parks and green belts, recycled water is used pretty extensively throughout our community to keep our green spaces green and do that in an efficient way. And you know, getting to green parks and, 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 and irrigation, the reason that we do need to irrigate so much is because we have we find ourselves in a fairly unique climate that is the Mediterranean climate. We all know that we live in a Mediterranean climate. That's great. It's one of the reasons it's a beautiful area. And what really defines a Mediterranean climate is that it's primarily dry, but it's not a desert, obviously. Um, it's really known for its mild winters where you receive the bulk of the rain, at least in our case, between the months of November and March. The rest of the time, it's fairly warm and quite dry. Um, Arizona, which you would think is a desert, they actually have monsoons and they actually get summer uh, rainfall. Whereas in California, Southern California, it's generally an anomaly when we do get rainfall in, Cal uh, in California in the summer. So why that matters, here we are, we're going to be talking about uh, landscaping and irrigation practices and, and finding the plants that suit you and your lifestyle. So one of the things to keep in mind is here in Southern California, where we know uh, weather is spotty and it, it's it can, uh, the seasonal patterns of rainfall can be boom or bust. Um, what's kind of interesting is comparing the water needs of lawn to native plants and obviously native plants have been evolved over time to to really understand and and uh, fit in in a mediterranean climate where they don't expect any irrigation or, or rainfall in the summer and they do in the, uh, the winter and so if you look at lawn throughout the year they need consistent water up to 50 inches of water uh, in a year compare that to the rainfall patterns that we generally get in orange county and this is kind of unique when someone says, oh, what's the average rainfall in Orange County? You might think, yeah, 10, 12, 14 inches. And yeah, you're right, you know, 12 to 14 inches is the average. And, you know, you went to stats class, right? Average means just that. If you get a really high year with 30 inches, you might also get a lean year of two inches. Um, and what's even interesting, more interesting is the median rainfall. That is the, the, the middle point of rainfall is nine inches. So, in any given year, we generally have, uh, or, or another way of thinking is, um, you have the same amount of years of below nine inches that you have as many years above nine. So we need to start incorporating plants that are more, um, that, that fit in and can accommodate and can adapt to the, the climate that we have where you might experience dry, very dry years, but certainly dry summers. And so what I want to do is um, invite back Amelia, who is a landscape architect and is really doing a lot of great work in helping us create resources um, for residents to think through. All right, so we live in a Mediterranean climate, fair enough. What are some plant palettes? What are some garden styles that might be uh, accommodating of the climate we're in? So I'd, I want to bring back Amelia and, and, uh, and have her lead you through the next discussion. Thank you, Nate. That's a great introduction and really the sole reason why we're trying to put together climate friendly um, landscapes and styles that people can choose from really make their landscape a success. Um, um, well, it's a pleasure to be here. I really love connecting with people about their landscape as well as their water use. 
Um, I see in that picture I'm wearing the same shirt, so <laughs> water efficiency specialist at the district, as well as landscape architect. Um, so just to give you an idea of uh, my background, I've been practicing landscape architecture for over 20 years within the uh, Southern California region and more specifically the Mediterranean climate region. So I love layering in style into water efficiency. Um, it's a great, a great way to ensure success for your project, whether you're improving a small area or an entire yard um, or an entire community for that matter. Um, we find that the style guides we're going to present today, uh, the Southwest, the California native, the Mediterranean styles all apply quite nicely. Um, now, just to give you an idea of how the presentation is organized, the first part of the presentation will really be geared towards laying out the principles, and you see those listed here on the slide. Um, each style guide will cover these principles. So um, you have the Southwest covering, uh, you know, your focal tree, your design elements, as well as your planting palettes. So the first part of the presentation will be more of a general overview of these principles and then the second part will be specifically diving into each of those styles so we'll get into a little more detail there hopefully you're able to download the presentation material from our website at smwd.com forward slash plants so where do you start uh, style is is one way to take a look at landscape. Um, sometimes it can simplify things for you. Um, we like to sort of uh, first though, have everyone kind of think about their architectural style and the architectural style that you see around you within our district. These are some uh, iconic uh, types of, land, uh, of architecture. First off, um, you've got some of the more of the Cape Cod that you see in the upper left. Uh, horizontal siding, the bungalow styles of Rancho Mission Viejo, as well as the stucco and the clay tile roofs of the Sam Lark and um, Rancho Santa Margarita communities. Now paired with the, this architecture, you can see how garden style can really tie in to architecture as well. So if you could just take a moment, this is a quick little quiz before we get started to see if you could maybe identify what type of garden style is shown in front of each of these types of architecture. And we can um, just take a moment there to take a look at the different styles, um, if they do look distinct to you. So we've put a little label on them for you to see that um, you know, that Cape Cod uh, horizontal siding uh, style that's a little, that is very reminiscent of the East Coast coastal communities can also tie in quite nicely with the California native labeled in CN. And then the Southwest, which is more of that ranch and uh, Old West frontier Southwestern look can also tie in nicely with the bungalows of Rancho Mission Viejo. And you'll see um, the succulents and we'll get into more detail as to why each of these landscapes are being categorized as such within our style guides. And then Mediterranean with the Sam Lark community as well. Um, now, just thank you, Nate. Yeah, um, in, in regards to the Sam Lark community, one thing to, to keep in mind is that all front yard improvements that are visible from the street are in need of being the Mediterranean garden style. And we've had the uh, landscape design review committees from Sam Lark review um, our templates, our Mediterranean garden style one particularly, and um, they give it a thumbs up. It's a great guide. They feel like that homeowners could successfully incorporate the Mediterranean garden style into their front yard um, landscapes within the community. So that's an exciting note to add. So another essential component of your landscape, as well as the foundation of your landscape, can be established trees. Uh, the focal tree is another focal element, along with your architecture, that is a long lasting element on the site. Uh, trees can define your style as well. So excitingly, you may have an existing tree that you, uh, you have on your property that you love, that provides shade um, and you want to incorporate into your landscape or you may want to incorporate a new tree and aren't quite sure which one could uh, could promote the style that you're trying to accomplish on your site. So take a, taking a look here, we've got a variety of focal trees that we're highlighting in our different styles, and we're going to give them a style type as well so that you can see how um, trees can relate to style. 
Now, in addition to uh, looking at what style a tree um, can uh, can complement on your property. Trees also offer a, a great opportunity for cooling the site. They incorporate um, the, the potential for drawing up deeper water and aiding in the water efficiency of your garden too. And in addition, um, they are a, a focal element that once planted can last for decades on a property. Unlike some of the uh, shrubs and perennials that you typically plant underneath them, um, the decisions you make now about your focal tree um, could potentially last, um, you know, in some properties we're seeing 60, 70 years easily. So again, still working on the basic design principles for our style guides. We wanted to let you know that we're in these style guides. In general, um, we're thinking about a first layer of site planning. Um, how does your architecture on your site um, aid in the circulation? You know, what kind of pathways, what types of screening, what type of elements do you need to dress up your landscape? So we have a checklist here that we will be hitting on each of our styles to give you some options for some of these categories. You can see in the picture, um, and this is the actual plan for this, uh, this home and it's a, uh, a, a more of a Mediterranean style home with a California native landscape. In addition to design elements, will also be providing uh, planting pallets too. And the planting pallets, um, not only specifically the types of plants you could use on your site, but hitting the key categories. Um, this makes your job really easy. So let's say you are redesigning a small portion of your landscape, just a section um, within your front yard. Um, you may say, hey, I need a, a nice sprawling ground cover that can um, really dress up some of the areas that are looking quite bare. You could go to these style guides and just look under the category of ground covers or you need an accent uh, hedge or shrub that potentially could add a little bit of excitement to the front yard as well. We've given you some lists of categories of plants that will hit each of these categories. And in addition, you know, really looking at um, the overall plan. Now there are other layers that you may need to add into this on your own. There's lighting, there's irrigation, and um, but we've tried to hit the major elements that you need to think about with these styles. All right. I'm going to interrupt for one hot second because there's two questions that might be good here since we're talking about planting pallet and by all means feel free to to provide more but Glenn's asking are crepe myrtle trees a good choice for this area and I presume you mean a front yard and then be before Amelia answers that there's an another question about what about Italian cypresses for the property border uh, both great questions. Now, both plants, both, um, I guess you could say trees, really, both trees are uh, quite traditionally used in the area. They've been used successfully in all areas of Southern California. Um, the main thing to consider with the crepe myrtle um, would be that it's more of a medium water user. Um, it still blends nicely with the medium to lows, though. It is considered maybe more of the Mediterranean landscape garden style. Uh, needing a little bit more care, a little bit more maintenance, but a beautiful accent tree um, for the landscape. Uh, it is deciduous too, so you lose a little bit of that a foliage and flower in the winter time. In regards to the Italian cypress, um, that also too, you'll see, we highlight it as a quintessential Mediterranean garden style plant um, and an accent, but it is a bit more prone to fire within our region. So it is targeted on the OCFA fire list as not a desirable, um, a desirable tree for properties where they would be planted within 60 to 100 feet of the home. So it's that's the it, key thing, right? Is the proximity to your structures. If it's out in the back 40, um, maybe more appropriate than right next to your the eve of your house. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Good questions. S 
So more resources and another launching pad for getting into diving deeper into each of the styles is our small space design exhibit. And this is an area that we've developed a picture of the area we've developed on the back um, the back half acre of our headquarters building property. It's called the Waterworks Garden. And the small space design exhibit is what we've used to lay out a small uh, backyard and we've dressed it up in three different ways. So the style guides that you see will actually be representative of this space. Um, this is an area that you can actually stroll, take a look at the different garden styles that are being implemented through the garden um, and get some ideas for your property too. So we're really excited that this space exists and um, we love highlighting it. You can see um, both Nate and I have uh, the ba our backdrops are different angles and pictures from the, from the Waterworks Garden. And um, I've got the California native behind me and he's got the meadow uh, and Southwest behind him. And, and, and so just to uh, let you know that this is out there um, and um, this is the foundation for our style guides. So starting off with the Mediterranean garden style, we already had two questions in the chat about Mediterranean style uh, plants. So I'm, I'm hoping that this will apply to some of you that are joining us today. The Mediterranean garden style, if you're interested um, in, we've, we've really tried to highlight those focal trees first. That's what you'll see listed. Um, just to take um, a moment to envision those countries along the Mediterranean basin. You have the quintessential French uh, estates, the Tuscan villas, the Spanish haciendas, all of those, uh, those images pull together to create what we're calling the Mediterranean garden style. And again, it is the, it is the highlight style for the Sam Lark community our Rancho Santa Margarita residence, and it has a lot of uh, great features and is definitely applicable as a climate friendly style within our area. So here we go, kind of taking a look at how these templates are, are laid out. Hopefully you've seen these uh, when you registered for the class. If not, again, at our, um, you know, you could find it at smwd.com forward slash small space or even forward slash plants. Uh, these style guides have links in them. You can click on the different plant links and see more details about each of the plants in PDF form. But the Mediterranean garden style really is known for its uh, gray green silver foliage plants, those splash of, of uh, red wine. You know, you'll notice a lot of the burgundy color foliage and trunks. Um, within the plant material and specifically we have grouped these plants together because they really utilize a similar amount of water. So we're looking at the medium to low category here for all of these plants. Now in addition, uh, we've got some examples in picture form on the template for the different highlight design elements that we spoke about earlier, um, and then how our small space design exhibit could potentially be laid out with these different elements. Um, we've got the tiered fountains, a little bit more formal, the, the fireplace hearth, um, precast concrete, cobblestone pathways, flagstone, natural stone, all work very well with this concept. And then the second page of the style guides are dedicated to just highlighting some actual pictures of the plants that um, that we are um, uh, we are pairing with the Mediterranean garden style. Um, again, the Marina strawberry tree, which has a burgundy color trunk, uh, works really nicely with um, the different nandinas and aeoniums potentially that uh, have that similar red tones in them. The fruit trees also work wonderfully with the Mediterranean garden style because you have um, the the tie-in with the Italian villas and the vineyards, as well as a lot of the the orchards that um, that really make a landscape more productive and usable as well. Yeah, if I if I may, Amelia, interject. You just mentioned citrus and and orchards. Any yes. any thoughts on citrus here? 
Well, citrus, um, it's becoming a little bit more sensitive and uh, highlighted as a tree to be aware of within this area. There's the Asian psyllid that's been spreading. It's actually forbidden to be planted in some of the North Orange County um, cities because there is still a rapid spread of that psyllid into the citrus trees. They're finding different varieties, certain varieties we've been testing to in our garden here in our home or orchard at the waterworks. Um, the Australian finger limes and some of the more non-traditional citrus seem to be um, handling the psyllid a little bit better than others, but it is something that you have to be very cautious of when planting. And it is possible in the near future, uh, citrus trees may be um, less available within the nurseries because of this. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, the California native garden style. Uh, now the California native garden style is, is one of our local favorites because the pollinators and foragers uh, love this style. They've adapted to this style. It supports the most biodiversity within our community for, for habitat as well as, um, as pollinators. And um, we've listed some of the trees that work really well with the California native garden style. Now be mindful, some of the California native focal trees are large, they're big. So you have to have a little more space to incorporate some of these larger oak trees and sycamore trees. Another th thing to be mindful with our California native garden style is that there are many different forms of California native uh, gardens. Uh, you have the riparian gardens that need a little bit more water. So it's not necessarily a lower water style always um, because some of the riparian landscapes are the plants that really thrive in those watersheds and lower river basins that are getting constant water throughout the year. Um, so we've highlighted more of the low to very low plants, um, but western sycamore you can see here is in gray because it is more of a riparian tree. It does need a little bit more water, which means that it could actually go in a, a higher water use zone potentially if you had that on your property. Um, so a little bit more detail about the California native garden style. It's a little more rustic. We're considering it to be our natural style, a style that when you're hiking or, or walking around um, our local hillsides, you would see sort of the same type of vegetation. Um, our real inland uh, climate caters to uh, both coastal and inland native plants, but some of those coastal native plants prefer a little more shade where we're at too. So our focal tree is the California oak tree. Um, you see we have some of our recirculating water features, um, you know, in comparison to our tiered fountains, our formal fountains of the Mediterranean garden style, you're looking more at plumbed uh, boulders, uh, gurgling boulders, uh, flagstone with natural ground covers in between, maybe more into the wood uh, split rail versus the uh, more concrete and mason stone walls. Uh, all of these uh, go really nicely in promoting the California native uh, feel within your, within, your, within your site. So to get a little glimpse at some of the, the, uh, the plants specifically that are highlighted, you can see on the next slide. Um, we have the Cal Coast Live Oak as our as our focal again, and then some accents are the western redbud and the blue elderberry. Uh, now, as you're looking through these plants, a good location to get some more information and find out, um, you know, more about California natives and planting California natives is our, our very own and local um, partner, uh, Cal our Tree of Life Nursery. Um, they're in our district and they're a great resource for um, for learning more about plants and planting native plants. Um, and we have links to their website as well as their informational, um, their informational videos on our uh, smwd.com forward slash plants page as well. And then again, ocplants.org, which we'll be going over later um, in, in demonstrating a, as a plant gallery resource is also a great place to find out more too. And lastly, the Southwest Garden Style. Um, this 
tends to be um, a little, you know, growing in popularity as the modern architecture um, sets the scene. The Southwest Garden style, even though it does hark back to that old world mission kind of hacienda uh, feel, it also has more succulents, more cacti, and more uh, tough southwestern plants that are in that very low water use range. Um, and so we've uh, we've tried to lay out some really fun and exciting uh, southwestern plants for you in our palette as well. So you can see how the southwestern uh, plant palette could potentially look in our small space design exhibit. We've got the different elements laid out for you again, more of the uh, the modern concrete curbs. And the reason why the Southwest Garden really ties into the modern landscape is because the plants don't change quite so much. They're a little bit more reliable. Um, they are more sculptural, similar to the simplicity and the architectural accents that you'll notice in more of a modern uh, structure. So you have a lot of potential for um, for plants that uh, that stay uh, colorful and interesting all year long. They don't go through those per, per, uh, perennial blooms and and diebacks that you'll notice in some of the other the other styles. And again, highlighting what these plants look like. They all are very tough, you know, reflective uh, leaf color, that gray green color really does reflect the sun and allows them to be placed in uh, areas that receive a lot of full sun in rock adjacent to a building and still thrive. Um, and in addition, uh, you know, you notice some of the more sculptural uh, agaves and uh, and trees, the aloe trees and uh, dragon trees, which are um, are really fun. And you, a great example of the Southwest Garden style can be seen in the uh, Newport Beach, the Civic Center that they recently um, opened up to the public. It's a public space where you can walk and see uh, modern architecture and Southwest Gardens associated, all adjacent to a coastal a coastal climate too, all within a coastal climate. Yeah, and then um, this is a nice this this car the silver carpet the mondia that's a really good ground cover because a lot of people I know ask you quite often like what's a good grass substitute or alternative? Absolutely, very very tough, very drought tolerant. Has a beautiful uh, white underside to the leaf that gives it a little um, a little shine, and then the yellow flowers obviously that emerge throughout the year too. All right, so now this is a fun test. So this is our, 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 our final test in regards to have we, um, have we described these styles enough today so that you can maybe take a look and see which one is in which of these pictures. So we have um, some perennials, a little bit more of a rural natural landscape on the upper left and uh, more succulents and uh, Palo Verde tree in the center, as well as some of the, uh, the red pop of the, uh, the cordelins on the, on the Sam Lark home on the right. So take a look and see if you can guess uh, which style is being represented of the three styles in each of these pictures. Hopefully you got a couple of those correct. Um, uh, and there we go. So California native is the more rustic, a little bit more of that pastoral look. Um, this is at Riata Park um, within our district as well. And then the Southwest um, is the, uh, it's actually paired here with a, with a more of a Mediterranean style home. Uh, stucco and clay tile roof, but um, it's really nicely shown with the colors of the succulents for our southwestern representation. And then uh, the, meta the quintessential Mediterranean home with the arches um, and front courtyard uh, paired in with what we were, we consider the Medi Mediterranean style landscape as well. Some of the resources that we wanted to leave with you as further 
um, to further your knowledge within uh, kind of where we um, have put gathered our style guide information from is uh, number one is Bob Perry's book Landscape Plants for California Gardens. Um, there are so many uh, quintessential landscapes laid out um, within this book um, that pair and revolve around a focal tree. So that whole concept of the focal tree really is Bob Perry's concept. Also, Wu Coles is a great resource for finding out what is the plant uh, water use requirement um, that for each of the plants that we've highlighted here, as well as um, our ocplants.org too. You can find that information as well. And then SoCal Yard Transformation Guide, um, that is a guide that is uh, a start to finish, you know, irrigation, planting, uh, site design, everything, a very handy guide for customers to be able to, um, to really envision how a landscape project could be laid out from start to finish. Of course, Tree of Life Nursery, um, and then always referring back to your own homeowners association guidelines i mentioned sam lark because that's one that's quite um quite tied in with the mediterranean garden style but each neighborhood uh, may have its own set in, of plants that are acceptable within the front yard landscapes um, that you need to incorporate within the designs too so always be checking on those guidelines as well is important All right, and I'm going to pass over the baton to Nate for ocplants.org, how to find out more about these plants and others um, at your fingertips. Excellent. Well, thank you. This is a, that was a really nice uh, um, synopsis of how one can think about designing for particular motifs or styles. And it's like anything in life. Once you realize what is possible, you can start to mix and match and incorporate aspects of one and the other, which is fantastic. So what I want to demonstrate right now is our online ocplants.org website. Hopefully many of you have seen it. If you haven't, you're in for a treat because this is a free um, resource that we've developed. And it's really nice. And, and the best way I can describe it is this. How often are you with a friend or uh, someone in your household and you're driving down the street and you see a plant and you're like that? That's the one I like. It's got, you know, that red flower. You know, it's like five five streets down. It's that one, right? And and, and your friend's like, huh? What are you talking about? I, don't, I, I can envision a lot of red flowered plants. Um, what this does is it's going to give you an, an image of a plant in, in, in a landscape and give you an idea of you can click on it and save that plant so you don't have to ever um, try to remember what it was it's always going to be at your finger trips and, and, and finding it what it is so let me um let me take a stab at technology again i'm going to stop sharing this screen and i'm going to share now my website let's see yep that's on good here's ocplants.org there it is there's our landing site and up across the top on the ribbon here you see home that's where we're at right now and if you scroll down, you can see featured gardens, plants, and lawn alternatives. And you can scroll down and, hey, workshops, we're in one right now. How meta. Um, rebates, we have rebates. So let's get back to the top here. And we have garden tours and galleries. And I want to show you both, but I want to start with tours because that's really the neatest one first. So again, you're driving down the road, if you will, and you come across the landscape and you see it. And here it is. And you're like, oh my goodness, I really like that bushy white flowered thing next to their driveway. And if you see it, you hover your mouse over it, it'll tell you what that plant is. And more to the point, if you click now, it'll give you the specific details about what that plant is. And like Amelia mentioned, you can get all of the good about the size, the shape, the color. Here's another cool thing too. Many times we have it organized by design. So in this case, you can take the Blackfoot Daisy and incorporate incorporate it into a Mediterranean or a Spanish or a wild garden. When you see wild garden, you can think of that, you can incorporate that into a California native garden easily. So really look at this plant, you can, you can make this work for you in any way you want. It's a nice wild card plant. So if you were to like it, I can click add and now I've 
added it to my featured plants in a list that I can store and save. And we'll get back to that in a second. But let's get back to where we were. Um, I'll hit the back button. And we can back get back to our tour and oh, allegedly, right? Allegedly. So there's our landscape again. And see this on the right? You can click right and you start to see other photographs of this landscape from different angles. So here up against the side of their yard, they had retaining walls and they have a couple plants spilling over. They have some small shrubs. Here's a Matilla hop poppy, a quintessential California native you might see in and around our um, park areas. Um, it can grow really tall and it can spread. It's beautiful. It's got the fried egg flower, right? You guys are all possibly remembering what this might look like. Um, and other, other plants there. So it's a really nice way of just going around a yard and figuring out what's what. There's a red bud and Amelia focused on, on one of those plants in one of her styles. Let's go back to tours. And I wanted to show you that we have over 12, 15, 18 different tours that you can go cycle through and look through. It's fantastic stuff. We also have these gardens and we, we go galleries. It'll give you ideas about more general um, topics. So in this case, lawn alternatives. Remember we mentioned Diamondia? Well, here's a bunch of other great alternatives to give you that low ground cover look, whether or not you want color. Here's one right here, the Canary Island Lotus. You just scroll right, you can start cycling through various options that you could incorporate into a lawn alternative. So let me go back to galleries because there's another one that I want to highlight. Uh, again, we know that we just suffered through, and look at that, Mediterranean gardens. You can click through and see a bunch of other styles and ideas that people have as a Mediterranean garden. And one could argue that's a, that's a mix, right, of a Southwest slash uh, Mediterranean in some respects. Um, but if I go back to the top here, you know, here's the California native gardens. We also have plant lists. So if I go helpful plant lists, you can see again, there's more lawn alternatives. And remember we mentioned that Diamondia or the silver leaf. There it is as an actual lawn, if you will. We also have low maintenance trees, low maintenance shrubs, all nice. We have firewise trees and firewise shrubs. So you can click this and think through shrubs that you might want to bring closer into your near your building or structures because these are uh, a little better for that. Here's a really other cool aspect for this website. Let's say you've gone through a bunch of different tours. You've selected all the plants that you like. And so you can come back to my list. And here's all the list of plants that I've liked over the time. And you can click out and you can print different reports. And, and Amelia mentioned this once, the Hydrozone report. And when you click this, it'll organize and sort the plants that you've selected by the water needs. So when it gets down to helping you think through design and how you place the plants and how you water your plants, this is gonna help you make sure that you water them appropriately. Because again, you don't want to drown one plant trying to water um, a plant that needs a, water, a lot of water. Or conversely, you don't want to not water a plant that needs water because you know it's going to happen. So you can sort these and you can see their water needs and that will help you. The, similarly, you can do a plant detail report and you can take this to a nursery. Because what's beautiful about this is a lot of times, again, getting back to the whole, hey, it's that plant that has that red flower. Well, a nursery could sell you 50 different plants, right? Well, this is going to be very specific because all they need is that Latin name, the botanical name, and they know exactly the plant you're looking for. Or let's say they can't source or spec that plant for you. They can get a general idea for the shape, the size, the function and they might then be able to uh, give you an alternative option. So I think that's quite useful for all of us. Um, let's see, anything else I should really mention while we're here, Amelia? It has some fun, um, it does have some fun other ideas like principles of design, all the things that Amelia's talked to and more. 
you can start doing your uh, DIY style learning here in this guide as well. It even has a watering calculator built within this website. Won't really uh, demo that now. Um, oh, I just thought of something. I have to share this because this is the this is too cool. Here's a nice guided search feature. So again, under plants, guided search. A lot of people like this. So let's say you're trying to come up with a plant that is, fits a certain um, function or a certain look or a certain area in your landscape. So let me give you an example. I keep harkening back to that red shrub, right? That red flowered shrub. Let's let's try that out. So let's say um, let's let's envision us in your kitchen and you have a window in your kitchen and you want to have a nice view out your kitchen. You kind of want to see a red shrub, but you don't want it to grow too tall because you still want to see through that kitchen view of yours. So let's say the plant's going to need to be a shrub. And it's let's say it needs half sun because in the afternoon it gets shade. So let's say it's half sun. And again, we don't want it to get too big. So let's say it's going to we're going to limit it to three to six feet in height. And red, absolutely. That's the color I need. So there's my red flower. You can narrow it down by soil. You can continue to do this, but at any point in time over on the left, you can say display results now, and you can see that based on the criteria, I've given it a shrub of half sun of a three to six height and a red flower. We have 25 results now. So if I click that, here are all the shrubs that match the criteria. And here's a personal favorite of ours, the Baja Fairy Duster, great shrub. We have it in our waterworks garden. Um, and it's still kind of a baby. It's not quite this big, but it's a beautiful, beautiful shrub. And Amelia could talk to more about it. But if you like it, you click add. That's the shrub then you want to build with. So I'll stop here. But again, this is ocplants.org. Um, I, I, I can't stress it enough. I think you'll have fun when you um, are able to see it. So let me turn it back over to Amelia and also we're going to check our um, chat features because this is where we can start to open it up to some dialogue. Thank you, Nay. Yeah, there was one um, one question in the chat about uh, plants that are resistant to to bugs, and um, you know the way that we would approach that would be keeping soil, keeping um, for you know the uh, nutrients to the plant keeping the plants healthy the soil um healthy with a resistant and resilient um you know uh, population of good bacteria microorganisms to be able to fight off different pests obviously there are some needs where you're, you're going to have to have application of selective um organic um you know applications whether it be um you know something for psyllids or fungus that could potentially affect the leaves of the plants. The hope is that um, the plant is strong enough to be able to um, resist and not not to be a fatal type of um, type of attack. And we we're actually dealing with a lot of um, a lot of pests and uh, rodents within the garden as well uh, within the waterworks garden that we are um, we are looking after as well. And so we're trying to explore um, how soil health really can affect the longevity. Um, we have done some soil testing. Sometimes that's required to, in order to find out what is the deeper issue that's going on. <laughs> um, regarding drip water systems versus sprinklers, this, this yeah. is a whole topic in and of itself, absolutely. And we do want to bring on some workshops that are really more irrigation specific. I can start and then Amelia, if you don't mind um, adding whatever else. But again, this is a very open-ended conversation. Let's start with what um, you might not think would be my answer is, let's forget about the plants first. Um, you might want to have drip irrigation in and around planter beds next to your stucco walls or any of your building structures. And the reason why is water causes damage, right? And so if you have currently, if you go and you turn on your irrigation system and you see it spraying onto your buildings, first of all, see if you can adjust the irrigation spray heads in a such a way that it minimizes that, that spray onto that. But secondarily, that's where we are seeing drip irrigation retrofit products, really nice for those planter beds that are, let's call it a two by eight or a two by 10 or a four by 10 
type of space, that can easily be converted over to drip um, so that it can water more efficiently right to the roots and not cause that overspray onto your building structures and, and, and whatnot. Um, and Rainbird makes a really nice conversion kit. It's called their drip, uh, drip conversion kit assembly. And it can convert the typical pop-up spray head and, and you take out the innards and inside of it, you put in place the conversion kit, which includes the mesh, the screen, the filter, and also the pressure regulator. And off of that, you can then start to run drip line um, in and around. So I'll, I'll type that in the chat what it is. But Amelia, any other thoughts to wind drip versus um, spray or rotary nozzles? That's a great question. And it is something that we're learning more about too. I, I think it's imperative that you have flush valves and as well as a pressure regulator and filter um, with um, with all of your drip systems so that you can maintain them and monitor them. They do require a little bit more uh, maintenance in the sense of they can get clogged or they can um, potentially be, um, you know, they just need to have um, a few uh, elements installed on the line that don't always get installed to make their maintenance a little easier. Uh, also, too, I, I concur with Nate that smaller, uh, narrow planters are a, a great application for drip just because you can track it better and the um, the coverage can be a little bit easier to, um, to monitor. Uh, but then again, there's some great high efficiency spray nozzles out there too that um, that are might be better for uh, for larger areas um, and maybe a more uh, a broader application. Yeah, and we offer rebates for rotary nozzles that are efficient. And again, like Amelia said, those are going to be your think of your wide open spaces. You know, if you have a 10 foot throw, that's where. Uh, spray head or, or even longer than a 10 foot throw. That's where spray heads or rotary nozzles come into play. And the, the way they work, right, you're mimicking rain. You're letting up, you're, you're, you're pushing water out into the environment and you're letting it fall onto the soil and the plants and percolating down. So take a in look addition, at, at both styles. In addition to that too is the, uh, the establishment period. So everything is really critical. We're finding at that onset of planting. So planting in fall is excellent because you're able to not have to supplement so much water on the onset. Sometimes the drip systems can lag a little bit behind when you're planting in the middle of summer in the extreme heat. Um, they just can't keep up with the depletion. Yeah, good point. So in the chat box, I've entered in two different uh, resources. One was that Rainbird drip conversion kit. Uh, the second one is the Master Gardeners of Orange County and their website, and they have amazing resources on pest um, identifying pets and how to possibly uh, take take control of them short of using DEET. That's great. And then also highlighting um, on this slide, just be, uh, and Nate mentioned it, the rebates that are out there. Uh, one thing that's new to our turf removal and spray to drip programs is that there's the landscape design assistance program as well. So if you are in need of additional assistance with design when you enroll in the turf removal rebate program, if you're deciding to take out your grass, um, it's currently $2 a square foot, and then the free design is incorporated into it. You get to meet with a designer and get a custom design that you could submit to your HOA or uh, give uh, and bid out to your contractors. Um, great, great addition, additional feature to this program. Yeah. Um, before we end, because obviously uh, we appreciate everyone's time and attention to join on this Friday, um, we are nearing the one o'clock hour when we had the schedule to end. That said, if you're on the line and you continue to walk, have questions, we can answer those. Um, the screen that you look, you're look you looking at, you can always give us a, you can contact via email or phone. If you have a question that you want to take offline, uh, happy to do that as well. Um, in the meantime, I've, I've got to ask Amelia a, a, a question here. Uh, we've recently established our Waterworks Garden and a lot of neat different plants and garden styles featured. What plant is really taking off? What, what plant really excites you right now? 
Oh, there's a few out there that are really exciting. I try to highlight them on Instagram and Facebook as much as I can. Um, so you can check that out there too. But that you you hit it when you're looking at ocplants.org. Uh, that uh, Caliandra, the Sierra star is is quite fantastic. It's still going strong with its red powder puff blooms. Uh, and it's placed in a south facing location with building reflective heat as well as um, you know, just some blazing sun um, throughout summer. It was looking great and it's looking even better now coming into fall. So it's it's a great red uh, red flower. We have it on our Southwest uh, garden style, uh, but I think it's proving that it really could look great on all styles. Yeah, no doubt. That is a neat one. And we're getting a lot of comments from people walk past that one. It really it's pretty striking up against our, our whitish stucco. Yes, I'll, I'll write it in there. OK, yeah, thank you. Um, well, we'll we'll continue to stay on here for a couple of minutes with the one o'clock, but do appreciate um, the interest in this. And we're please go back and visit um, ocplants.com along with smwd.com and all the resources that we're going to continue to have up there regarding plants and irrigation. Um, and you're, since you've watched this, we're going to be developing future workshops. And if you have a suggestion of what you would need help with or what topics of our interest to you, please let us know. That way we can continue to develop resources that help you um, put in great looking, su successful and sustainable landscapes. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, we'll hang out for everyone, but uh, if, if, if you sign off now, everyone, we won't take it personally, and you guys have a great Friday. <laughs>